Hi, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on looking at and working with security groups. So now that we have a, a better understanding of what security groups are and how they work, let's go ahead and take a look at how we go about creating security groups in AWS for our EC2 console, for our EC2 insta instances. So what I'm going to do, I've already logged into my AWS account. What I'm going to do is go ahead and navigate to my EC2 dashboard. And within the dashboard on the left hand side, I have an option under network and security for security groups. Additionally, even in the resources section, I can go to it from here. As you guys can see, I have five security groups created or I can access it from here. As you guys can see, there are four additional security groups that have been created that I actually created. And then there's the one default one, which is created by AWS when the account is created. So what I'm going to do is let me quickly clean up these security groups. There we go. I'm going to leave two security groups. One security group is currently used by the instance that I have running. And then there's this is the default one. So in order to create security groups, I would simply go up here and create a security group. Here I have to specify a name, description in terms of you know what this security group is going to do, what this, what this security group is going to be associated with, and then the VPC or the virtual private cloud. Now, if you were to click on the drop down arrow, if you had multiple VPCs, all of them would show up here. But since I only have the one default one, only one is showing up. But obviously, then you can associate the security group in which VPC the security group is going to reside. And here I can create and add different rules for the security group, both for inbound and for outbound. So again, uh, for outbound, it by default allows all traffic since security groups are stateful. And the inbound by default, it denies everything. Just as a refresher, obviously security groups are permissive, meaning we cannot deny specific inbound traffic. We have to allow traffic. So here I can allow various different types of traffic. I can create TCP rules, UDP rules, ICMP for pinging, uh, custom protocols, or I can do all, I can do all traffic if I want to open up every single port in my EC2 instance or specific ports for SSH. So let's say if you're launching a Linux instance and obviously you're going to be SSH into SSH, you will be doing SSH to the EC2 instance to obviously do the configuration and admin tasks, then you would want to open up SSH port or the HTTP if it's going to be a web server and so on. So we have multiple protocols, right? Uh, depending on what this EC2 instance is going to be used for, we can allow that specific traffic to come into it. So let's say that uh, if this is going to be a web server, I'm going to open up HTTP automatically. It puts the port 80 for HTTP because uh, by default, HTTP works on port 80, or if I were to do HTTPS, it will change to 443. So let's say if I wanted to open up HTTP, port range, again, is automatically defined. The only way to custom define this port range is if I were to go up, up here, and let's say if I were to do a custom TCP rule, protocol with TCP in here, I can specify a specific port number. So let's leave it to HTTP. Here's the source. So I can do anywhere, meaning basically anybody can access this EC2 instance from anywhere. I can do a custom, so I can do a custom sitter block, uh, IP address, or even a security group. Or I can do my IP. Now what my IP basically does, it detects the current IP that you're using to log into the EC2 to AWS console and allows access only from there. Now be careful using this because if you are uh, working from home and you use my IP, uh, most of the time your IP addresses are not static, they're dynamic. So your ISP is going to change the address that's assigned to your router uh, every time you log in, or let's say it depends on which ISP. So just keep that in mind. If you select my IP today and let's say tomorrow you're not able to log in, that's because you did my IP and uh, your IP might have changed if you're working from home. So let's say anywhere, since this is a web server, I want inbound traffic from anywhere and I'm going to go ahead and click on create. There we go. So now I have my security group created. Now, multiple different things I can do with the security group. So if I have the security group selected in the actions, I can delete it. I can add tags. Um, I can copy. So let's say if I want to copy the security group to a new VPC that I'm creating, I can copy this VPC and it'll basically copy all of the security group rules. So if you have a security group that let's say has, uh, you know, 15 to 20 different inbound rules and, and permissions, 
instead of doing every single one again, we can simply copy the security group and apply it to a different VPC or a different EC2 instance. And also here in the bottom of the description tab, it basically gives you all the information about, about the security group in terms of the inbound rules, the outbound rules, and the tags. And again, this stays fairly standard throughout the EC2 dashboard. And we can also do the same thing through the command line interface. Uh, through the CLI in terms of describing our uh, security groups and creating them and so on. So let's say if I let's say if I had already created the security group EC2 test and I've only allowed HTTP traffic. Let's say now that I also want to allow HTTPS traffic. So editing security groups is a fairly straightforward process. I make sure that I have this selected in the actions. I have an option for editing either inbound or outbound. I obviously want to edit the inbound rules. I can simply add a rule. So let's say if I want to add HTTPS, right? Uh, from, again, from anywhere, uh, I can do anywhere or custom. So custom, again, you can specify a sitter block or if you do all zeros up here, it's basically anywhere and a description. And if I go ahead and click on save and voila. So basically the security group has been modified to allow both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And if I want to delete the security group again, I make sure I have the security group selected. I go up here and what I did in the beginning, I simply delete the security group. And again, ask me to confirm. And if I go ahead and click on yes. Now, what happens if you have a security group that's attached to an EC2 instance? So like the example I have up here, it's attached to my EC2 instance. So if I were to try to delete this security group, It tells me that the security group is associated with one or more instances. So basically I have to terminate the instance or disassociate this security group with that instance before I'm allowed to delete the security group. As you guys can see, the delete is grayed out. So if a security group is associated with an instance, it cannot be deleted unless that it, either that instance is terminated or you associate that instance with another security group. And just for your reference, sometimes you guys might hear egress or ingress. Uh, that just basically means inbound or outbound. So e ingress is obviously inbound, inbound rules and egress are outbound rules.